life's not fair, is it, my little friend? While some are born to feast, others spend their lives in the dark, begging for scraps. The way I see it, you and I are exactly the same. We both want to find a way to get out. What's up, YouTube? It's Raining Car Games, and welcome back to another episode of Sealed Only Dragoonity. This is episode five. So, gentlemen and ladies, we have a lot of fun stuff planned for today and a lot of cool product that we have to open up. Now, before we go ahead and crack open today's product, I have got to borrow a little thing from Head to Head Battle, so zoom zoom hand camera thing. Thanks, Head to Head Battles, and everyone, I would like you to meet the new channel mascot and my recently adopted dog. Everybody, this is Wyda. He is a Siberian Husky, and for those of you who don't speak Quechua, which is 90% of my audience, or anyone who cannot pronounce the earthbound immortal names, Quechua is, in my native language, means wind of the Andes or demigod of the winds. And, yeah, this is my little big bag of wind. Hey! What? <laughs> He's a handful. And he's a talker. What? Okay, anyway, zoom zoom hand camera thing, back to the studio. Uh, yeah, so we now have a new channel mascot, and um, he is quite the handful. But anyways, uh, before we go ahead and open today's product, if you guys would be so kind as to like, comment, and subscribe, all those really help the channel out because, you know, we're pushing for it. Once we pass that 2K mark, we may even have passed the 2K mark by the time that this video is airing, but keep going strong. Thank you so much, guys, for all the support. And then obviously, if you want to help support the channel even further, there are links down below in the description, like TCG Player, Discord, Instagram, all that fun stuff, you guys. Feel free to check those out. Hey YouTube, I'm gonna briefly interrupt past me because at the time when I am out enjoying a walk with Le Doggo, the channel has officially passed the 2,000 subscriber benchmark. I can't believe it, I was just walking and YouTube uh, Studio app gave me that notification and yeah, wow, I just, thank you guys so much. Um, I can't believe we've already hit 2,000 subscribers and the channel is still growing, so that is crazy to me. Now, um, probably after this episode of Sealed Only Dragoonity, I will be making like a 2,000 subscriber giveaway slash uh, probably product opening, some kind of like a mini video to celebrate the benchmark, so just keep an eye out for that. And anyway, someone wants to keep on walking, so I'm going to get back to that and I'm going to let you guys get back to the video. Enough of me talking, let's go ahead and start opening some product. Okay, so it is time to get some feet. What? Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and crack all this product open, you guys, because we've got our 25 dudes, we've got eight buckaroonies, of Hidden Arsenal, the last of our box, by the way. And then our eight bucks on the Saiho. Got a good deal on this. So yeah, we are one dollar over. Fight me, I will take you out. One buck over budget, that's fine. Let's do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the guaranteed stuff before we go into our packs. Um, we'll do it like that. Anywho, uh, Saiho promos. Ooh, another Hope Harbinger, and an Eternal Galaxy. 
But yay, we can make two now. Yeah, super pile. Super pile. Um, let's look at our field center. We already have the Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherry. Oh my god. Okay. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. Pegasus. Ooh, Kaiba boy. Yeah. And uh, Spooky Dogwood. Cool. These can go here. And the. Oh my god, where's the tab? The best deck ever built. Uh, ha ha. So, Ghost Ogre, Ghost Reaper, Feet! So you see, because this is the Feet Ash Blossom, she can negate twice. And the real reason I bought this box. My favorite of all the Ghost Girls, Ghost Bill. If someone can make sleeves, like extra deck sleeves for me, and send them to the PAO box, or you know, just send in fan mail, I will be eternally grateful. Anywho, ah, uh, Ghost Sister and Red Blossoms are under root. Okay, so, our Ghost Sisters can be over here. And now, Synchros and all the little extra stuff, so you know, we may actually use some of the stuff in here. Ally of Justice Catastor, Generic Level 5, Brionic, yay! Metaphys Horus, Black Rose, Clear Wing Fast Dragon, you know what? Hmm, Start a Spark Dragon, my boy, Star Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend, an Ultra Trishula, but we don't need you because we have you in Secret Rare. A Vermilion Dragon Mech, and those will do it for the Synchros. Um, hmm. Oh my god. It's stuff that I'll definitely put in that I know right off the back. Uh, and then we'll just have an Ultra Pile up here. Um, a Dweller. We can make it. We have fours. Honor Arc. Castell. Tornado Dragon. Underclock Taker. Land Ferencus. Gaia Saber. Decode Talker. Uncoded, Top Logic Bomber, sorry, you should, you know what? Um, yeah, we'll put you guys in the gigantic Ultra Pile, because everything's Ultra Pile and dude. Didi Crow, Fact Veiler, Gate Blocker, Denko Seka, Inspector Border, Spell Canceler, Lance, yeah, you know what? Vanity's Ruler, Majesty's, or Vanity's Fiend, Majesty's Fiend, Pancratops, Gamma Seal, Mind Control, Jeff Motion Cannon, Super Poly, uh, Book of Eclipse, Silent Graveyard, Cosmic Cyclone, Called by the Grave, Different Dimensional Ground, Typhoon, Forbidden Apocrypha, D Barrier, Lost Wind, Heavy Storm Duster, Royal Decree, Anti Spell Fragrance, There Can Only Be One, Wiretap, Psalm Strike, Upgrade for our red reboot. Oh my god, there are so many cards that we can actually use! I love dude. Um, standout cards though. Uh, called by. And. I don't know. We'll just have a gigantic pile of ultras that we are definitely gonna use. Now, that is for the guaranteed stufferoonies. It is time my friends and subscribers to go into the not guaranteed stuff. Come on! We need a Koos, a Senatus, and an Ascalon from this set. Goki Ring Trainer. I'll move that pack out of the way. Oh. Cupid of Voli. Demise Agent of Armageddon. Hip Hoshiningen as a super. Ooh, Incantation Candle. Good card. Uh, rare Pile can go here. Uh, Perform Bell the Bellman. World Legacies uh, Mind Meld. Link Devotee, Crusadia Leonis. Okay. The Common Pile, the Commoners, can go... Uh, you guys can go up here since I don't really need you. Common Pile, Ghost Girls can actually go right here. No. Aha! Organization. I love it. Uh, next pack. Come on. Dragoonity Coos is a common in this set. And we're probably going to have to revisit the Mega Packs from 2019 because we want Nub Nub and all that good stuff, but Dragoonity. 
Zero Extra Link, Crusadia Vanguard, Goki Ring Trainer, Dealer's Choice, oh my god, Hollow Upgrade for Mirror Force Launcher, World Legacy Crown, Crusadia Regulex, Divine Serpent Guess, Cybernetic Overflow. Oh my god, come on, Cybernetic Horizon. I just need a common out of you. Well, I need a common, a super, and an ultra, but a common shouldn't be that hard to pull. It should not be that hard to pull. Shield Handler. Crusadia Draco. Hey, that's nice. Another one. I will set you down there. Beast Magic Attack. Oh my god, Danger Zone. Ugh, wrong Ultra. Hey, Incantation Talisman are nice. Solitary Sword of Poison. Cycle of the World. Goki Tag Partner. Mythical Institution. Well, we're definitely going to have to revisit Cybernetic Horizon once again, unfortunately. That's wrong pot. Alright, the last of our Hidden Arsenal packs. So far, our Dragoonity pulls have been questionable in that we haven't really pulled a good Dragoonity card from here. I mean, we got the Gay Bold, but he's not the best Synchro, but he is a Synchro. Okay, we'll put our secret at the back. It sucks that Phalanx is literally short printed in Hidden Arsenal and in the Kaiba Collection. And uh, yeah, we're not finding a dual terminal is all but near impossible. Drac Brachis, Argenix Overseer, Dewdark of the Ice Barrier, <laughs> the Engineer. Wow. And Fable Leviathan. Great. Yeah, we'll set a trick. Hollow upgrade. Whoop, bump the camera. Silly. Oh, wait, I forgot to put the card to the back. Well, it doesn't matter because we can see it already. It is a fabled Ragon. Ragin. Ragin. We'll call him Fabled Ragin. Worm Tentacles. Uh, sorry about that. Argenix Accelerator. Fabled Mitaji. Argenix Magma. Yay. Okay, two more packs left, you guys. We've got this. We have got this. <laughs> Nechoria Fruit Fly. Fabled Roostos. I haven't pulled that one yet. Direct Brachis. Argenix Overseer. And. Oh my god. You know, I find it ironic that on the box it says more Dragoonity cards. However, they are literally the hardest cards to pull from this set. And oh my god. Oh my god, this pack. Uh, it's sad though, because like this, getting a hold on one of these hidden arsenal boxes is easier than getting a uh, legendary Kaiba collection. Those boxes are either over budget or very rare to find on auction, which is how I'm pretty much getting my hands on the few that I've gotten so far at a reasonable price. Argenix Accelerator, Dew Dark of the Ice Bear, Warm Ugly, and uh, the boss monster of worms to round out our box. Worm Zero. Yay. But it's okay. Dude is literally carrying this opening. We're gonna give our deck a very important overhaul. And you know what? Pulling a Draco, another extender. That's a wind. Uh, hollow upgrade for Legionnaire. It's not the worst thing in the world, but let's go ahead and edit this deck profile. So, right off the bat, as you can see in our Dragoonity lineup, not too much has changed, but you can notice that we have added some feet and an effect veiler. So, we have two hand traps now in the main deck, and then also we do have the called by the grave and everything to help deal with problematic stuff and hopefully have our plays resolved without being ashed ourselves. But in the extra deck is the real change here. As you can see, we've added a lot of the monsters that we pulled from Dude, including the Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend, the Clearing Fast Dragon, which we can make in certain situations the Brionic and then also our rank fours of Tornado Dragon and Abyss Dweller and then also our Underclock Taker just to you know kind of give us a more generic link along with the Saryuja just to hopefully you know help span the board and then also in the side deck we've added all of the great stables unfortunately they're all one ofs but they're better than we what we had before so hopefully we can see some results with this new upgraded deck so now, we have some feet in the deck. This means we've got two negates. Anyway, I think the deck is looking much better now with the addition of all the stuff we've pulled from Dude, as well as just a few little sprinkles here and there. But, um, 
I think we're in much better shape to go second in this kind of pseudo going second style until we can really realistically get some good turn one plays that you know can have some combo interaction everything we're gonna have to stick with this going second strategy because really that extra draw that extra draw means a lot to the deck but enough from me let's go ahead and hop onto EDO Pro and start dueling some channel patrons all right so for match number one, we are going up against Mr. Q's Mod Shop from our YouTube channel member group. And yeah, our opening does not go well because our only play gets met with an infinite impermanence. So we just have an ankylus lying on the field to deal with his Morphtronics. I'm just kidding. They're appliancers. <laughs> yeah, so we're going up against his appliancers once again. And yeah, with no interaction, I'm not, I don't see my Ash Blossom or my Effect Veiler. So... I do not have many or actually any interaction at this point, and he can completely pop off using Sign of Mining to grab stuff like 4 Mud Skipper using his Parallel Exceeds to get free rank 4s onto the field. It is difficult, and he goes for Baguska. This is troublesome because I don't really have a way to dance around this. Essentially, when it's in defense position, it shuts down all my plays, unless they're Link Monsters because Link Monsters can't be turned into a defense position. So, really, it's just a matter of, can I get into a Link monster that can deal with Baguska? Because otherwise, my Synchro plays are completely turned off. However, I can easily do that because I have included my brand new Link 2 under Glock Taker. And by getting out of Garuda, I can then Link Climb into my Triple Burst Dragon, which has enough attack points to deal with the Baguska. However, he does have the Link Karibo, which can protect it. And, um, yeah... That essentially leaves me with a conundrum where I can't really do anything. So I just pass it back over to him. And he still leaves. What's interesting, the, what interests me is that he left the Baguska in defense position, which turns off his four mud skipper's effect. However, I'm still worried because he still does have the appliance or laundry dragon on the field, which can out pretty much any monster that I have on my board, regardless of the attack points. So... Yeah, once I see the Relinquish Anima hit the field, I know that my Triple Burst Dragon is going to get the suck, which it inevitably does. And now I'm looking down at 24 from my own monster used against me, and then a 15, which actually doesn't do anything because Laundry Dragon, or Tubby the Washing Machine as I fondly call him, can't do battle damage. Unfortunately, I have no follow-up, and I just end up setting a monster and passing it back over. And yeah, this is not looking good. Game one and Baguska, unfortunately, now turns to attack position. And at this point, I'm like, I can't do anything. And with a security dragon bounce, my field is left completely open. And he has enough damage on board to do exactly lethal. Now, game two, we make him go first and hope that we open something that can help us go second. And... Really, all he does is just a Link Karibo pass. So, like, okay, if I can out a Link Karibo, we can take this game. So, I top deck a Dragon's Ravine, which is actually pretty good, which gives me access to a whole, well, I wouldn't say a whole wide variety, but of some of the few plays that my deck can do. And using a Rocket Synchron, I'm able to go and bring out Scarlight Red Dragon Arshine, which is able to deal with the Link Karibo and get in for a hefty amount of damage, putting him on a two turn clock. Question is, though, can he out it? And most likely, I would imagine so, considering he has stuff like Relinquished Anima and Kaijus and all this stuff, knowing how he builds his deck. And speaking of Kaijus, of course, I get hit with the Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Let them fight. So, my Archfiend is gone, and now I'm looking down a Jizukiru and a 4 Mud Skipper, which gives him all sorts of access to his appliance plays, but he doesn't. He just opts to go straight into the battle phase. Then I see the security dragon, four muds effect triggers, and then with parallel exceed, he can bring those out, and he can bring two out, which enables him to go into rank four. I fear Baguska, but then I see Trap Tricks Reflesia, or Rev's Card's Deck Mummy, and he passes. So I only have to really deal with one negate, which I can deal with a giant turtle. So I give him a turtle, slap that on his field, and when I try to use Dragon Ravine's effect, I get met by some feet of 
his. So at this point, I'm like, okay, let's go the classic old school beatdown. We're able to go into Gabog and we're able to get over a security dragon because really I'm more afraid of him having Link monsters on the field than a Gamseal, which doesn't really do anything and also prevents him from summoning a strong Kaiju on his side of the field. But hey, I get a Jizukiru. Unfortunately, Tubby the Washing Machine can deal with Jizukiru, which doesn't really help my case in this point. So he gets in for a whole bunch of damage, but I am still in this. And I top deck one of the best possible cards I could ever top deck, Return of the Dragon Lords, which this gives me access to my Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend in the graveyard who can clear the field. And then I can go ahead and normal summon whatever, and I can get in for lethal and i take this game so we're going to game three all down to the wire can we win this match he makes me go first which is not great however i did decide to go in first so i set up a very formidable back row of strike lost wind and a bottomless and yeah i get let them fight kaiju ah but it's okay honestly the set monster was a bluff and i don't mind having a very powerful Kaiju on my field, however, you do have to keep in mind that Launcher Dragon can deal with it. And when he tries to crash, of all things, I lost wind his Kaiju, which means that I keep mine on board. And at this point, I'm like, okay, it's time to get some serious damage in using stuff like um, Rocket Tracer to spam out monsters. And then to get out a Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend, I get him down to 1750. But yeah, Kaiju Slumber in the Graveyard just searches him a Jizukiru. Which does not bode well because he can just special summon it, meaning he can beat over my Scarlet Red Dragon Archery. However, I bottomless his uh, Kaiju. Unfortunately, he goes into Link Karibo. He's able to use Parallax C to get out more monsters. And I see a Baguska again. And essentially at this point, it just becomes a, draw, a drawn out battle where Tubby the Washing Machine takes me out. And I lose this match. But it's okay, because we are going up against our next opponent, J-Chip from the J-Chip Show, who is playing... Yeah, we're playing against dinosaurs. And I already, once I see the Lost World hit the field, I am nervous. Because I remember what that field spell did to me last time we played. And there's the Jurassic Egg token. This token continues to cause me so much problems uh, and you know the annoying part is I've added in a generic link monster of underclock taker however underclock taker requires two effect monsters not two monsters so I cannot still can't link away this drag token food for thought for the future <laughs> so at this point I'm like oh boy I can't really do anything with the attack reduction from lost world I can't even beat over his monsters so I just end up setting a Draco, but that doesn't do anything when going up against an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. So, UCT does what he does best. He clears out my field, and then I just go ahead and I take a whole bunch of damage. But I'm not out of the woods yet. He does not have lethal, leaving with 900 life points, and I top deck a Rocket Synchro. It's not the best top deck in the world, but using my... Um, Hornet drones, I'm able to get out enough monsters on the field and avoid that ultimate conductor tyranno um, book of moon effect to go into Burl Sword. And when I go in for the kill, I get met with a ghost ogre, and that ends that game. So, game two, I go first and I end on a Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend with a set Twin Twisters. Don't have too many plays, but I'm hoping the Twin Twisters can deal with Lost World, which it does on his turn. But he has another one in hand. So that Twin Twisters was just a waste, unfortunately. Ah, but it's okay. Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend is still a very powerful card and strong enough to hold its own against a Megalo Smasher X. However, using the field spell and trying to destroy the token, he's able to get out monsters and get stuff for future plays. So now it's on me to basically get this game done and over with before UCT hits the field. And top decking a bottomless trap hole is not the worst thing in the world because this can actually out... Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. So using Scarlight's effect to clear the special summons off the field and then going into Dragon Ravine so that I can get my Senatus live so that I can go into a Dragoonity Knight Gaybolg, I go ahead and activate his effect and I equip a Coos from my deck. And as soon as that resolves, I get met with a Twin Twister. 
And Twin Twister sends a miscellaneous source to Graveyard, which does not bode well. So at this point, I'm like, okay, let's battle over, get rid of the Megalo Smasher X. But he protects his Megalo Smasher with Lost World, popping a Petite Ranadon. That grabs him a Pancratops. And then end phase, Pancratops pops my Bottomless, which is my only out to UCT. Yeah, you can pretty much see now where this is going. He banishes two dinos from his graveyard, brings out the Big Daddy himself, Book of Moons my entire field, and then he just goes ahead and uses Miscellaneous Horse to bring out a Tyranno Infinity, which is now at 6,000 attack. And he starts to clean up my field with UCT so that he can deliver the killing blow with Tyranno Infinity for a whopping 6,000 attack points. And he takes that match. Oh, can't catch a break today, can I? Now, for our final match, we are going up against Pendulum! Best deck. Yeah, we're going up against Odd Eyes once again. Now, we win the die roll, and we make him go first. And he ends... He's using um, Pelag uh, the Felgrand Monsters, which is an interesting tech choice, but it does work considering he's able to get monsters from his deck and then get them into the extra monster card zone, but he doesn't end on a formidable board of just an absolute dragon with a Lampharynchus. So at this point, I'm like, okay, if I can reduce his monster's attack points, and then, from my knowledge, I thought, triple burst dragon can negate effects during the battle phase, correct? So that means I can negate absolute dragon's battle phase ending effect. Unfortunately, I misread because triple burst is a damage step, not battle phase. So... I can't activate that effect. Absolute Dragon negates the attack and special summons out. And then at this point, I'm like, great. I have no way to survive. He Pendulum summons using Rocket Monsters, interestingly enough, which have good synergy with the Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon. And he, yeah, brings out his own Triple Burst Dragon, spins away mine with Odd, Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, and he goes in for a bunch of damage, taking game one. But... Game two, we side in a bunch of lovely back row hate and going second cards, hopefully able to break his board and deal with some of the stuff that he's able to put out. And it's only a matter of time to see what kind of board he will end on. Now, he's able to get out Rocket's Tracer, which pops, and because it pops as an Odd Eyes card, Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon is able to get out an Odd Eyes Persona, which is a negate of a monster from the extra deck, and he just ends on a Triple Burst Dragon. So it is a beatable board, and I have a Kaiju. So I Kaiju out his negate, which then leaves essentially an open board for me to just go in and do a whole bunch of damage. So using Boot Sector Launch, I'm able to get out two free monsters, and then Normal Summon my Coos, and here's where I start to do some big Cranium plays, because I want to be able to get in as much damage and optimize my play so I'm actually able to get into my Boral Sword Dragon with an extra monster on the field meaning that my Boral Sword can attack twice and get in a whole bunch of damage and he's able to clear out his field unfortunately the only downside is my Garuda the Wind Spirit is not able to attack over that Gamma Seal that I gave him so he's just going to sit in defense position while hoping that my Boral Sword can essentially just survive the turn so that I can take this game now he opens up with his own Boot Sector launch, getting out monsters of his own, and then he's able to Pendulum Summon more monsters, which gives him four monsters on board. Then he goes into a Mind Control, giving him five monsters. Now, he goes ahead and he links off all of his monsters into Borolo Dragon. This is an out to Boral Sword. The OG takes my retrain. The retrain gets in a whole bunch of damage. Rocket Tracer pops Boot Sector launch, bringing out a Silver Rocket. Silver Rocket hits in, and then using Boral Sword's effect to target the Silver Rocket. He gets in again for another attack, and Silver Rocket's effect triggers, and I send out a Boral Load, and yeah. At this point, I just top deck an Effect Veiler, and I just suicide, and I lose. So it's a rough mat set of matches for this time around, but we'll get there. And that is going to do it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, stay tuned for updates on future episodes, other videos coming out. And I will see you guys in the next episode.